My Weird School, Book Number Thirteen. Mrs. Patty is Batty, written by Dan Gutman, pictures by Jim Palat. Chapter Six: Giant Bananas and Two-Headed Astronauts. This was the first Halloween that me and Michael and Ryan were allowed to go trick or treating without our parents. We went home to drop off our backpacks and get pillowcases to hold all the candy. Then we met up again at Michael's house. Let's go, Ryan said. If I don't eat a Twizzler in about five minutes, I'm gonna die. Not so fast, Michael said, opening up a big map he had drawn. I worked it all out, so we'll have the maximum candy accumulation. Wow, big words! Michael should be in the gifted and talented program. Me and Ryan looked at Michael's map. Michael doesn't like just to walk up and down the street collecting candy like a normal kid. He always plans a careful route so he can go to all the houses that have good candy and not waste any time at the houses where people turn off their lights and pretend they're not home. Michael is weird. We'll save Mrs. Patty's house for last. Michael said. She says she has more candy than anybody in town. Let's go. I was thinking about what Mrs. Patty said earlier at school. Do you think there really is a Halloween monster? I asked the guys as we headed up the street. Of course not, Michael said. Mrs. Patty was just a yanking our chain. We'd better be careful, just in case, Ryan said. We set off on our candy quest. There were lots of kids in weird costumes walking up and down the street: giraffes, Darth Vaders, two-headed astronauts, princesses, cowboys, ghosts, four kids dressed up as a bunch of giant bananas. What a freak show! We saw teenagers dressed up like bums. Teenagers always dress up like bums on Halloween. That must be an easy costume to make because teenagers dress like bums even when it isn't Halloween. Trick or treat! We shouted when we got to the first house on Michael's map. A lady opened the door. "Ooh, you boys are scary," she said, even though she totally didn't look scared at all. "What are you supposed to be?" We're a zombie football player, a zombie hockey player, and a killer zombie penguin," Michael said. "From outer space," I added. "You can each have a piece of candy," the lady said, holding a bucket out for us. "Can we take two?" I asked, grabbing a Milky Way. "Well, okay. Can we take four?" I asked, grabbing a Butterfinger. "No," the lady said, pulling back the bucket. That lady was mean. We went to the next house and got candy there. Then we went to the house around the corner and got candy there. Before we went to the next house, each of us took a piece of candy out of our pillowcase and ate it. There's no reason you have to wait until the end of trick or treating to start eating your candy. You need to start eating your candy right away, so you'll have enough energy to get more candy. That's the first rule of being a kid. Michael led us a few blocks away to the next house on his map. He rang the doorbell, and the weirdest thing in the history of the world happened. A lady answered. Well, that wasn't the weird part, because ladies answer doors all the time. The weird part was who the lady was. She wasn't a regular person. She was Mrs. Cooney, our school nurse. It was weird. I thought Mrs. Cooney lived in the nurse's office, but she lives in a regular house, just like a regular person. Chick or treat! We shouted. Ooh, I'm scared, Mrs. Cooney said, even though she totally didn't look scared at all. Mrs. Cooney brought out a bowl filled with apples. Carrots and nuts, apples, carrots, and nuts. Who gives out apples, carrots, and nuts for Halloween? That's health food. You can each take one, Mrs. Cooney said. 
Uh, do we have to? I asked. Don't you have any candy? Asked Michael. Candy isn't good for you, said Mrs. Cooney. It rots your teeth. I'd rather have rotten teeth than no candy, I said. But we each took a bag of nuts anyway, because that was the closest thing to candy, and we didn't want to hurt Mrs. Cooney's feelings. She doesn't know the first thing about Halloween. You're not supposed to give out healthy food. Mrs. Cooney is loony. Luckily, most people gave us candy, but at one house, a man gave each of us a quarter instead. He said he ran out of candy. Getting a quarter is almost as good as getting candy because you can use it to buy candy. We had been trick or treating for some time when we walked past a spooky graveyard. That reminded me of the Halloween monster again. Nothing scares me. I would fight a bear. I would fight a lion. I would fight an elephant. Well, I don't think elephants fight, but if one of them did, I would beat it up. But I really didn't want to see the Halloween monster. It was starting to get a little dark and scary out. Hey, if you guys get chopped up by the Halloween monster, I asked Ryan and Michael, "Can I have your candy?" There's no such thing as the Halloween monster, dumbhead. Michael insisted. But just in case, we made a deal. If one of us was chopped up by the Halloween monster and the other two survived, they would split the dead kid's candy. And if two of us were chopped up, the kid who lived would get all the candy. I wondered if Ryan and Michael were secretly hoping that I would get chopped up by the Halloween monster so they could split my candy. I figured they were probably thinking that because I was secretly hoping they would get chopped up by the Halloween monster so I could keep all their candy. It really didn't matter because each of us was filling our pillowcases with about a million hundred tons of candy. Mine was getting heavy. It would be hard to eat all that candy in one night, but my mom tells me I can accomplish anything if I put my mind to it. I'd better eat some more of this candy, I said, reaching into my pillowcase. It's getting too heavy to carry. You'll still be carrying it, Michael said. It will just be in your stomach, but it weighs less in your. I never got the chance to finish my sentence because at that very moment, the most terrifying thing in the history of the world happened. A horrible creature jumped out from behind a wall in front of us. It was the Halloween monster. Chapter Seven: The Halloween Monster. Boo! The horrible creature yelled at us. He was waving his hairy arms around in the air. Ah! Screamed. I think the three of us jumped about ten feet high. Take our candy! Ryan yelled. Take it all. Just don't kill us. It was a hideous creature with thick brown hair all over its body. It even had a hairy mask on its face. The only thing the creature was wearing over all that hair was a pair of underwear, tidy whities. I thought I was gonna die. Are you the Halloween monster? I asked, trembling. No, dumbhead. The thing said as it took off its mask. It's me. It was my friend Billy who lives around the corner. Hey, that costume is cool. I told Billy. What are you supposed to be? Ryan asked. Take a guess, Billy said. A vampire? Guessed Michael. Nope. A werewolf? Guessed Ryan. Nope, said Billy. I'm the underwear wolf. Get it? A werewolf in his underwear is an underwear wolf. Well, the only thing funnier than getting someone to say underwear or seeing someone in their underwear is a kid dressed up as a werewolf in his underwear. Billy is weird. Where are you guys heading? He asked us. I'm finished. Trigger cheating. We're going to one seven six Norman Road. Michael said, showing Billy the map. Our school secretary lives there. Oh, you don't want to go there. Billy warned us. That house is haunted. Haunted? We all asked. 
A chill went down my spine. I've been to haunted houses and amusement parks, but I've never been to a real haunted house. Oh yeah, said Billy. That lady is a witch. She poisoned her husband, Marvin, and chopped his head off. He came back as a ghost, and he's been driving her insane ever since. She still keeps his head in a bucket down in the basement. How do you know all that? I asked. I know everything, Billy claimed. I'm in the gifted and talented program at my school. Wait a minute, Michael said. Why did she chop his head off if he was already poisoned? For the fun of it, Billy said. I told you she's a witch. I'm warning you, stay away from that house. It was hard for me to imagine Mrs. Patty poisoning her husband or chopping his head off. Every time I get sent to the principal's office, she seems so nice. One time, she even gave me a lollipop. I really wanted to see what kind of candy Mrs. Patty was giving out, but if she chopped my head off, I wouldn't be able to eat the candy anyway. I didn't know what to do. I don't believe you, Ryan told Billy. Mrs. Patty isn't a witch, and she's got more candy than anyone in town. That's what she told us. She just told you that so you'll come to her house, Billy said. Go see for yourself. But don't say I didn't warn you. When she poisons you and chops her head off, don't come running to me. Billy left. I put my hand over my neck. Maybe Halloween isn't my favorite holiday after all. Chapter 8 The Most Horrible, Dreadful, Disgusting, Repulsive Creature That Ever Walked the Earth Maybe we should go home now, I told Michael and Ryan. We have plenty of candy. Go home, Michael said. Are you crazy? We haven't been to Mrs. Patty's house yet. She has more candy than anyone in town. But what if she chops our heads off, I asked. Stuff like that happens all the time, you know. She is not going to chop our heads off, Ryan said. Your friend Billy doesn't know what he's talking about. Yeah, Michael said. And Mrs. Patty told us over and over again that we have to chick or cheat at her house. She might chop off our heads if we don't show up. Good point. Michael really should be in the gifted and talented program. We kept walking down the street. It was dark now and scary. I was looking all around just in case the real Halloween monster jumped out from behind a wall. Do you think Mrs. Patty's headless husband Marvin still lives with her? I asked the guys. Ghosts have to live somewhere, Michael said. They're just like regular people, except they're dead. I feel sorry for ghosts, said Ryan. They're like homeless dead people. We turned the corner onto Norman Road, where Mrs. Patty lives. That's when I saw the most horrible, dreadful, disgusting, repulsive creature that ever walked the earth. It was Andrea Young. She was with her annoying little friend Emily, and they were dressed in their girly costumes. Emily's mom must have sewn that dumb queen outfit together again. What are you two doing here? I asked. We're trick-or-treating, dumbhead, Andrea said, just like you. Andrea and Emily said they were heading for Mrs. Patty's house. I didn't want to walk with them, but it did feel safer with five of us walking together. Finally, we got to 176 Norman Road. It was a big house. It looked really old, like one of those haunted houses in the movies. There was an iron gate on the outside and some dead trees by the driveway. Wow, Andrea said. I didn't know school secretaries lived in mansions. When we got closer, we peeked through the gate and saw Mrs. Patty's Halloween decorations. There were tombstones sticking out of the lawn. A foot was poking out of a window. There were jack-o'-lanterns with evil faces 
spiders hanging from strings, and cats with eyes that lit up. Smoke was coming out of a big pot. Spooky music was coming out of speakers. There was a dummy sitting on a chair on the front porch. I hope it was a dummy anyway. If that thing moved, I decided I was going to make a run for it. This place is creepy," said Emily. Andrea shivered. Mrs. Paddy sure goes all out when it comes to Halla, but she didn't get to finish her sentence because suddenly the front gate squeaked open. Nobody even touched it or anything. Come inside," said a weird man's voice. "If you dare." Chapter Nine: Mrs. Paddy's Weird House. Who said that? Michael asked after we heard the weird man's voice. Headless Marvin? It wasn't a person, Ryan said. It was one of those computer voices. Let's get out of here, said Emily. Before it's too late. She sounded like she was about to cry as usual. I wanted to cry too, but I didn't want to look like a baby. I, I'm not scared. I said. M- me neither," said Michael. We went through the gate and climbed the front steps. You could hardly see anything, even though I was walking on my tiptoes. The stairs squeaked with every step. I was trying to find the doorbell when I walked into some spider webs. They were all over my face. Yuck! Then I put my foot in something. It was stuck. I couldn't get it out. Ah! I screamed, shaking my foot. You stepped in a pumpkin head, Dork," said Andrea. "I knew that," I said, finally shaking my foot free. Any time somebody tells you that you did something dumb, always act like you did it on purpose. That's the first rule of being a kid. Ryan rang the doorbell. It played funeral music. I was hoping that nobody would be home, but soon we heard footsteps and the front door slowly creaked open. I held my breath. It was Mrs. Patty. She was still dressed in her witch costume. At least she didn't have an axe. Aha! She said in a scary voice. My last group of trick or treaters is finally here. I love your Halloween decorations, Mrs. Patty. Said Andrea, who never misses a chance to brown nose a grown-up. What decorations? Mrs. Patty said. My house always looks like this. I was really sweating now. We better go, I said. It's way past our bedtimes. Isn't there something you want to say first? Asked Mrs. Patty. Yeah, I said. How does that word stay on your nose? You're supposed to say. Chick or cheat," said Mrs. Patty. "Oh," we all said. "Chick or cheat." Before I give you candy," she said. "You must pass a test." No, that's not how it goes," said Michael. "All we have to do is say 'chick or cheat' and you give us candy. Then we leave. That's the way it's supposed to work." "Not here," said Mrs. Patty. "Do you want the candy or not?" "Okay, okay." Ryan said, "What's the test?" "If you go trick or treating," said Mrs. Patty, "and they give out Twix bars at ten houses and Nestle Crunch bars at five houses and Baby Ruth bars at seven houses, how many candy bars will you have all together?" Hey, that was totally not fair. Mrs. Patty was trying to turn trick or treating into math class. All day long, we have to learn reading and writing and math. My brain is tired after school. I shouldn't have to do more schoolwork. Mrs. Patty isn't even a math teacher; she's a secretary. Twenty-two. Andrea answered right away. You'll have twenty-two candy bars all together. That is correct, Mrs. Patty said as she turned around. Come in. The candy is down in the basement. Down in the basement? Why couldn't she just keep a bowl of candy in the front hallway like normal people? Mrs. Patty is batty. 
I didn't want to go down in Mrs. Patty's basement. I didn't want to see her husband's head in a bucket down there. It figured that Andrea had to be so good at math. If it weren't for her, we could have left. Mrs. Patty opened a door and told us to go down the steps. It was dark. I could hardly see anything except some skulls in the walls with candles in them. When we got to the bottom, we had to walk through a winding hallway. There were doors going off in different directions. I didn't see candy anywhere. We weren't sure which way to go. We're lost, Andrea said. Ouch, Emily said. I hit my head on something. Let's turn around and make a run for it, I said, before it's too late. I'm scared, Michael said. I think I'm going to pee in my pants, said Ryan. If I die, Andrea told Emily, you can have my candy. You are a true friend, said Emily. You can have my candy if I die. I wished they would both die. I didn't even care if I got their candy or not. We came to the end of the hallway. There was a door. A sign on the door said, Candy in here. I put my hand on the doorknob. Don't open that door, Michael said, just as I was about to turn the doorknob. Why not? I asked. In horror movies, Michael explained, whenever somebody opens a door, a crazy guy wearing a mask leaps out with an axe or something. Don't be silly, Ryan said. Open the door, AJ. We'll get the candy and get out of here. I looked at Ryan. Emily looked at Andrea. Michael looked at me. I didn't know what to say. I didn't know what to do. I had to think fast. So I turned the doorknob. Do you want to know what was behind the door? Well, I'm not going to tell you. Okay, okay, I'll tell you. But you have to read the next chapter. So na 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 boo boo on you. Chapter 10. Marvin the Headless Mummy. Behind the door was a big dark room, and it was full of kids. I couldn't see much, but I recognized Neil the Nude Kid and Annette and some other kids from our class. They were just sitting there, like they were waiting for us. It was weird. In the middle of the room was a big trunk. It was like one of those trunks that pirates used to hide their treasure. Michael asked, What's in the... But he never got the chance to finish his sentence. Because suddenly the top of the trunk started to lift up. A hand was pushing it open. And then this thing got out. It was a mummy with bandages all over its body. But the weird thing was that the mummy didn't have a head. Well, it had a head, but the head wasn't on top of its shoulder where it was supposed to be. The mummy was holding its head in its hand like a football. Eek! screamed Emily. It's Marvin, I shouted. Mrs. Patty's dead husband. His ghost came to life. He's the Halloween monster, yelled Ryan. We're gonna die, Michael screamed. I told you we should have made a run for it, I shouted. Ha ha ha, said Marvin's head. I had no idea how it was able to talk, but it did. It said, give me your candy, put everything in the trunk or else. That head didn't have to ask me twice. I ran over and dumped all the candy from my pillowcase into the trunk. So did Ryan and Michael and Andrea and Emily and Neil the Nude Kids and Annette. I guess that mummy made all the kids turn over their candy because there were about a million hundred candy bars in the trunk. Bwahahaha, said Marvin's head as Marvin danced around the trunk. It's mine, all mine. Now at long last, I have more candy than anyone in town. My life is complete. Bwahahaha. That's what you think. We all turned to see who said that. A big guy stepped out of the shadows at the other end of the room. 
He had a crown on his head and a sword in his hand. It was Mr. Klutz, our school principal. It is I, he said, pointing his sword at Marvin the Mummy. King Louis the Fourteenth, in the name of France, surrendered that candy. Over my dead body, Marvin said. That was really weird. Everybody knows mummies are dead bodies to begin with. Marvin grabbed a sword off the wall with the hand he wasn't using to hold his own head. Then he and Mr. Klutz started sword fighting just like in the movies. It was cool. Get him, Mr. Klutz, we all shouted. Kill the Halloween monster. Mr. Klutz and Marvin were dancing around, swinging their swords at each other. Off with your head, Mr. Klutz said, taking a wild swing. His head is already off, somebody yelled. Oh, Mr. Klutz said, let him meet Kike. The sword fight was really exciting. Finally, after a million hundred minutes, Mr. Klutz knocked the sword out of the Halloween monster's hand. Please have mercy, Marvin said as he fell to his knees. Be gone, Mr. Klutz said. Don't ever steal candy from the children of elementary school again. I'll get you, my pretty, said the Halloween monster as it ran up the stairs. And your little dog, too. I don't even have a dog, said Mr. Klutz. After the Halloween monster ran away, Mrs. Patty came downstairs. Hooray for Mr. Klutz, she yelled. We all started cheering. I have defeated the Halloween monster, said Mr. Klutz. I mean, Louis the Fourteenth. We should celebrate, said Mrs. Patty. Let's have a candy party. Yeah, we all yelled. Mr. Klutz and Mrs. Patty tipped over the treasure chest and dumped all the candy on the floor. We were allowed to eat whatever we wanted and take the rest home. I ate so much candy, I thought I was going to throw up. It was the greatest night of my life. After eating all that candy, I couldn't fall asleep for a million hundred hours. I just lay there in bed, thinking about all the cool stuff that happened. Maybe Mrs. Patty does keep her Halloween decorations up all year round. Maybe her husband, Marvin, really is dead. Maybe she did chop his head off and turn him into a mummy. Maybe that's why he's so mad and he has to run around the house holding his own head. Maybe now that he lost the sword fight to Mr. Klutz, he'll be nicer and stop taking kids candy. Maybe Marvin and Mrs. Patty will get back together and just be normal people again, even though one of them is dead. And maybe Mrs. Patty will be able to get that word off her nose. But it won't be easy.